Hello everybody, welcome back to Flying with Overkill F-18C Hornet, and today will probably be one of the last tutorials we do for the Hornet, if not the last one. Um, we are going to be taking a look at the four um, air-to-air -air weapons that we have available to us. The AIM-7 Sparrow, the um, AIM-120 AMRAM, the AIM-9 X-Ray, um, Sidewinder, and then the Guns Mode. Um, we will be looking at them all in conjunction with the radar assistance. So with the exception of the guns and the AIM-9, we will also be looking um, at using those without the assistance of the radar. Okay, um, just a quick disclaimer here, a couple of things you guys are probably wondering, or maybe wondering. Um, I'm not going to be going over air-to-air -air refueling, um, and that may change in the future. The reason being right now is I'm used to flying in VR, excuse me. Um... And when you fly in VR, it, you know, forget the graphics, forget the cool immersion. The biggest thing that you get is depth perception, which is obviously huge for things like uh, close air formation, you know, air to air refueling, your landings, things like that. Those are all huge um, when you get depth perception. And then so I was trying to mess around the other night on track IR practicing some air to air refueling and I'm a mess. I can't do it. Like it, it, was, it was actually making me giggle like, um, you know, in VR, I can lock up all day long. Um, or hook up all day long, but uh, in track IR, I, you'd think I was brand new to the aircraft. Um, so I, I, we'll see. Uh, and the other thing is ADF uh, navigation. I may do a quick one on that. It's just I, I, I have never used it in the two years the Hornet has been available. Um, so I don't know that it's really a necessity, especially when you can enter your own coordinates. But I may show it. We'll see. Um, and then finally, the last thing I will not be going over is the case one recovery or landing on the aircraft. And there are two reasons to that. First one is um, between life, kids, work, you know, the videos here, doing things with my wing when I can fly. Um, I'm just not as proficient with the carrier as I used to be. Um, I've lost a lot of my proficiency with it. I really need to get back after it. Um, and that's one of those ones where I don't feel like it's okay to demonstrate it when you look like, you know, you're a mess yourself, right? Um, and the second reason is because ever since the before the hornet launched the best tutorial i have ever seen on uh case one recovery is by jabbers um and i will have a link to his video in the description below if you guys are interested in that he does a really fantastic job with it if you haven't seen it he goes step by step by step through the stages of the case one approach and then you know pausing showing screenshots things like that doing displays and then after that he does a you know a, a fluid flow through right he just he shows you the whole thing in action without pausing um just did a really great job plus they're funny as hell i love his videos but anyway, so um, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the air-to-air -air weapon system. So let's gonna go ahead and unpause here. I'm gonna put us into air-to-air -air mode and we're gonna start out, I think, with the Sparrow. So I'm going to hit my uh, quick Sparrow button here. And you can hear, you see here you have your size buttons now. I'm not sure what small would be. Medium is typically perfectly fine for fighters. Large is gonna be things like your AWACS. And this just lets the seeker on the missile know, you know, what it's looking for, or what kind of target that we're hitting is my understanding of this. Um, if I'm wrong, by all means, correct me. We're gonna keep it on medium. And then you have loft mode. Um, loft mode, again, and please feel free to correct me if I'm wrong about any information that I say here, guys. This is just what I've been able to dig up. My understanding of the loft mode is to sort of increase the range of the AIM-7 Sparrow. It allows it to climb up very, very high, and then it sort of dives down on its target, um, increasing the range um, a bit. So um, that's my understanding of it. If I'm wrong, by all means. Um, and the other thing is the computer, even in loft mode, I believe the computer will select which mode is appropriate. So if loft is not necessary for the strike, it will not loft the missile. The missile will go straight after its target. So like in a close air engagement, even if you're in loft, the missile is just going to go straight after it. It's not going to actually climb up. Okay. Um, my understanding is this is just for targets that are out at range. Okay. So let's see what we got. We're going to go ahead and leave it in loft mode and see what we get here. So we've got a couple of uh, targets closing in on us here. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down. And I'm going to put it in TWS mode so I make sure to grab the correct guys here. And we're going to go for these guys that are up here. Come on, baby. Lock up. All right. And I'm going to start turning the aircraft here. There we go. Helps when I turn the autopilot off. All right. So we got a shoot cue. Missiles away. All right, and there it goes. So you guys can see the missile's climbing way up. And then we'll come climbing down on its target. 
I'm going to throw some speed brakes out, see if I can reduce our closure rate. Remember, when we fire the AIM-7 from TWS, it will automatically go into single target track, as we talked about in the radar tutorial, but I figured go over it again. All right, keeping our target within our sight, our ASE, as long as we can, um, but all we have to do is maintain the azimuth. If we need to turn, we can turn. Now it's into the R&E, uh, R range no escape. And that's a splash. All right, so we'll untarget designate that guy real quick. I'm going to come over here and grab one of his pals real quick so you guys can hopefully see what it does when the loft is not necessary. Oh, shit. There we go, and I'm going to fox one. Where'd my missile go? Oh, there it goes. All right, so you can see that one did not loft because it was not necessary to make the strike. All right, so you don't have to take it out of loft mode. It's just if you are at a larger range, it will loft. Where I would take it out of loft mode at a large range is if, for example, I was striking a bandit down at 15,000 feet, and let's say I was up at 30,000 feet, I would absolutely remove it from loft mode. I wouldn't want it to climb. I want it just to dive down. All right, so now let's go ahead and move to the AMRAM. And let's get our radar scan back up. Radar scan? Radar scan. Radar scan range. And I'm going to go ahead and lock a target up here. Okay. And again, we're going to bring it inside the ASC circle. That's that big green circle. And that is the allowed steering error is what that ASC stands for. Now, this guy's actually turned away from us, so he's turned cold. For those of you who don't know, cold is when they're turned away. Hot is when they're coming at you. And uh, flanking is when they're going from left to right across your perpendicular. and Or right to left, doesn't matter. And then cranking is when they are coming at you at a 45 degree. So they're, they're trying to pull you to the edge of their scan zone. Okay, or azimuth. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, accelerate time a little bit here. We've got our steering cue. And the other thing we want to do that I have a bad habit of not showing is we want to do our IFF interrogation. And that is a little harder when they're turned away. A lot of IFF is done actually by the engine turbines. So when they've turned cold, you may not ever or always get an IFF response. So keep that in mind. Careful when firing on a bandit that's turned away from me. Yep, so like I'm not going to get one because he's turned away from me. So I know it's a bandit. We're going to go ahead and Fox 3. And for you guys who don't know, the brevity for um, the different missiles, Fox 3 is for an active guided radar missile like the AMRAM. It does not require any guidance from the aircraft once the missile goes active. And just like we saw before, um, here's our time to target, our um, indication of the missile's position in relationship to the aircraft on the radar, and the A indicating that the missile's radar has gone active so we can now turn and run. Okay. But FOX-3 is for the AMRAM. FOX-1 is going to be for the Sparrow or any semi-active guided uh, missile. So again, the example there is the Sparrow. The Sparrow requires us to maintain radar contact of the Bandit all the way until the missile strikes it. So it's a semi-active uh, guided radar or semi-active radar guided missile. And then we have FOX-2, which is going to be your heat seekers, like the AIM-9. All right, so the next thing I want to show you guys is the AIM-9 Sidewinder. Okay, now turn the labels on so you guys can see the aircraft a little bit better. So first off, let's listen for the seeker. Now, speaking to the seeker, the first thing you want to do before using an AIM-9 is you want to take this override cool switch, or infrared cool switch, and switch it to norm. Okay, and what this does is it begins cooling the seeker on the front of the AIM-9, therefore making it more sensitive to hot targets. Okay, and there's enough coolant on board to... Um, cool the missile for up to three hours of continuous use. So anytime that you're not using the AIM-9, you want to try to switch this down. I should say not in a combat scenario, not just using the AIM-9, but anyway, so now let's go ahead and what I'm going to do is bring the targets close to our missile. All right, so that tone there, let's go back over here. This is the seeker tone. That means it knows there's something close to it, but it doesn't have a lock yet. Once you hear, the missile is ready and can be shot. Okay, and then what you're going to do is what I just did there, is you want to press your cage uncage button, so C by default, 
and they will actually lock the seeker onto the target. Okay, now this is using the AIM-9 without radar support. Notice the radar is not locked on a target. Okay, and then we can simply FOX-2. And it's back into seeking with the other missile. Now that was a really long shot for the AIM-9, so keep that in mind. Now, let's show you that one more time here, and then we'll go over radar mode. So again, we know those targets close. The seeker can now see it. I'm going to hit my cage uncage button. The missile is now locked. Fox 2. All right, so let me go ahead and reset here and I'll show you guys what it looks like with radar assistance. So now we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the AIM-9 with radar assistance. Now, the biggest thing to remember with the AIM-9 is again, it's short range, so you don't ever really wanna be in your uh, BVR mode. So we're gonna use our HMD today, okay? And we're gonna go ahead and make sure our AIM-9 is selected. So we're gonna to go to air to air mode. And all I'm gonna do here Let's close a little bit of distance. And turn our cooling switch on. All right. So you can hear, just like we saw before, when the big green circle gets close, the seeker's letting you know there's something nearby. And then once it gets a lock on it, we can simply uncage. Actually, we don't need to uncage, disregard that. And Fox 2. As soon as you hear your missile tone, you can let her loose. Okay. And then the final demonstration, we're going to go into bore sight. You can see we have up on the HUD. I'm just going to pull my bandit into the circle. Hit my uncage, brings the seeker on, and Fox 2. Alright, I know that was quick, but uh, I hope you guys caught what happened there. So it's just a matter of if you ever see that the circle, it's, it's important to remember where the circle is. If the circle's ever not on your target, but the radar lock box is, like we're seeing here, okay, you need to make sure you hit your cage uncage button and they will automatically bring the seeker over to whatever the radar has locked. Okay, so square box is your radar, circle is the AIM-9. If they ever have a circle on one target and the square on another, you need to make sure you hit cage uncage, your C by default, it will slew the, the AIM-9 seeker over to your radar contact and then let her loose. Okay, anytime that you're using the HMD, once you get that high pitch, dude, let her loose. Okay. The growl means that there is a source that is close by to where you are looking, okay? All right, so this time I'm gonna show you guys how to use the gun funnel without radar support, okay? So let me do something real quick. Let's turn that HUD repeat off. Oops, is that what I want either? Just shut the damn RWR off, there we go. Okay, so the objective that I'm gonna try to do here is you have two, three different indications. First, this is going to be our horizontal um, range. So basically how this works is you, this little dot indicates you're 2,000 feet away, the, cent, the top dot is 1,000 feet. And you're gonna start, when you're bandit, you're gonna start working him from the top or from the bottom up to the top. Because as you get closer, his wingspan is gonna get larger and larger in your face. And the objective here is you need to get one of these dots on him and his wingtips need to be inside the funnel. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys what that looks like here. Get on point here. And the funnel is not near as easy to use as the attack radar. But I hope you guys caught the gist there on what we were trying to do. And then finally, this is the much easier way of using the gun, and I always recommend this whenever it's an option. 
We're going to bring our radar back on. You can see the big hash circle that comes up. That's a flood mode. And any target that comes, or any aircraft that falls within inside that circle will be locked up by the radar. And then it gets ridiculously easy to use it. I thought I had a second aircraft in orbit, but I guess not. All right, so let me get closer to these guys, and I'll be right back with you. All right, so this part gets easy peasy. All you got to do is close the distance. We need to make sure that we're inside of about a mile and a half to a mile. And all we're going to do is put that dot, and you can see our range cube coming down. So here's our range cube coming down in the circle. Once the dot is on your aircraft, the box is inside. Okay, so we probably should do an IFF, but we can't. Oh, there we go. We'll get our shoot cue. And as long as you have that dot on the aircraft, this thing's like a sniper rifle. So there's our shoot cue. And it's just, it's death and destruction, guys. And we are in way too close. Sorry for the weird camera angle. I zoomed in a lot so you guys could see it. All right, so we've got him locked up. Again, same principle. Get the dot on that bird, and as soon as it's on it, oops. And it doesn't take much to grip it and rip it. And the biggest thing to remember with the gun is you have a high and low velocity. Okay, low velocity is going to be 4,000 rounds per minute. High is 6,000 rounds. When you're ever dealing with air to air, ideally you want to be on 6,000 rounds. Oh, he's running. Let's go get him. Oh, we'll just follow our radar. Oh, I think we broke radar. There he is. All right, so we'll come back down on him again. Wait for that shoot cue. You can see we're at 3,800 feet from him. He's out of there. All right. That was kind of fun. All right, guys. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed the air to air series as well as the F-18 series of flying with overkill as a whole. Um, it's been a lot of fun making these. Um, if there's anything that I've missed, as usual, make sure to uh, leave comments and questions in the field below. If I need to make another one, I have no problem doing that whatsoever. Um, but uh, it's been a good time, and I think next we're going to start working on the F-16, and once we get caught up with development, maybe move into the JF-17. Um, but if there's a different aircraft you guys want to see, World War II, helicopters, don't care, it doesn't matter what it is to me, um, let me know, and we'll see about getting something started. Um, until next time, everybody stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you soon.